Good morning. My name is Ashley Rowe and I am the Governor of the Reserve Bank. I'd like to introduce you to my fellow Waikato Diocesan and Economists, Amy Spittle, Jess Nicholson, Yakane Dupse and Taylor Warren. On June 10th, we decided to leave the OCR unchanged at 3.5% due to the following considerations. Strong, strong domestic demand, weakening aggregate supply, the, um, the closing of the output gap, strong domestic growth and unemployment, erratic wage and price setting behaviour, the current inflation and growth rates and our three major trading partners, China, the USA and Australia, low commodity prices and the monetary policy decisions of other central banks. Domestic demand is currently strong and forecasts expect this to continue. Retail sales volumes are up by 7.4% this year. This strong demand is a result of a thriving housing and construction market, high net immigration, high annual employment growth and climbing household spending. As you can see on the graph, house prices in Auckland are rising sharply, climbing 16.9% in the year to March. In comparison, the National House Price Index rose only 7.7%. Although house price inflation in Auckland is very high, the option of increasing the OCR to combat this is not open due to very low CPI inflation. We think the macro prudential policies of proposed loan to value ratio restrictions for borrowers in Auckland, the government's introduction of a tax on investment properties and increased supply of new housing will effectively manage the rising house prices in Auckland. Meanwhile, house prices will contribute to demand through the wealth effect as people feel more confident spending due to their assets. The Westpac McDermott Miller Consumer Confidence Index increased to 117.4 for the March quarter. Consumer confidence continues to be above average, pushing up AD, as consumer spending habits remain healthy. As demand is not expected to slow much this year, keeping the OCR unchanged is a viable decision. However, later on, if wages do not increase as predicted and demand weakens, cutting the OCR would be an option to look to in order to maintain price stability. Government, government spending has increased in the first quarter of 2015 to an all-time high contributing to domestic and aggregate demand increases, causing demand pull inflation. The predicted depreciation of the New Zealand dollar against many of our trading partners will cause export receipts to rise and import payments to fall, giving an improved balance on the current account. Rising exports will increase firms' profits. Export receipts in the dairy industry are the exception to the rule, as dairy prices are currently low since the Global Dairy Trade Price Index fell 4.3%, and Fonterra has revised down its forecast farm gate milk price for the 2014-15 season to $4.40 per kilogram of milk solids. The opening forecast for the 2015-16 season has been set at $5.25 per kilogram of milk solids and we expect it to rise further. As you can see on the graph, economic growth is expected to remain relatively stable at an average of 2.8% growth in real GDP for the next four years and your employment growth is high, largely due to the construction <coughs> sector. Although the construction in Canterbury is drawing to a close, we're expecting an increase in building consents in Auckland, Waikato and the Bay of Plenty regions, which will keep employment growth relatively high. Business confidence has dropped to 15.7% for May. As reported by ANZ, this is largely due to the negative expectations of the agricultural sector in response to the fall in dairy prices. Low business confidence will decrease aggregate supply as businesses reduce capital and stop expanding, possibly leading to a shortage as AD is higher than AS. This could cause prices to increase. Due to the falling exchange rate, the cost of commodity prices and imported raw materials are increasing, resulting in increased production costs for firms. Firms will therefore increase prices to maintain their profit margin. Inflation is currently significantly lower at 0.1% than the midpoint target of 2% as seen in the graph. Wage and price setting behaviours are erratic, although an increase in the workforce has decreased wage inflation over the start of 2015, dropping from 0.5% to 0.3%. The closing of the output gap due to near full employment will push up the cost of wages and result in New Zealand heading into inflationary territory, causing a shortage in skilled workers due to their high demand. Rises in nominal wages, increases cost of production for firms and as a result we will see AS fall and cost push inflation. 
The effect of these domestic factors is shown on the graph where AS is decreasing slightly and AD, AD is increasing, returning inflation to within the target band without intervention from a lowered OCR. The nature of the New Zealand economy, in that it is highly dependent on income from its exports, means that it is essential to take into account other global economies when considering changes to the OCR. China has inflation of 1.5%. Producer price index is down to 4.6% and also a record low consumer confidence index. These have contributed to reduced growth to 6.7%. However, with two interest rate cuts since November and a reduction in reserve ratio requirement, growth will not fall further and is likely to increase in the latter part of 2016. US growth is relatively high at 2.7% with household real incomes increasing. Inflation is relatively low, reflecting decreases in energy prices. The Federal Reserve expects inflation to rise towards 2% over the medium term and are predicted to put up the interest rates in September to maintain price stability. There has been an increase of 280,000 people employed in May this year with unemployment steady at 5.5%. In Australia, there has been a decreasing trend in the inflation rate since the beginning of 2014. The current rate of 1.3% measures up to what was expected. However, this is still short of the country's 2-3% to target range for price stability and is forecasted to fall below 1% in the coming year, creating the possibility for interest rate cuts to follow. Additionally, <coughs> Australia also has a below potential growth rate of 2.3%. Low commodity prices play a key role in the lower growth rates, especially for Australia's major mineral exports such as iron ore. There has been large oversupply of these minerals globally, which is putting downward pressure on prices. The low Australian dollar is discouraging foreign investment, but improves conditions for exporters, which will lead to growth in the medium term. Overall, the economic <coughs> growth of our, of our trading partners is low, except for the US, but we expect this will rise over the coming months. Currently the global market is very volatile due to relaxed monetary policy by several central banks, low oil and commodity prices and global uncertainty about future trends. There is also continued volatility in the bond and currency markets. Geopolitical factors affecting the economy include the continued uncertainty about the future of the EU, particularly Greece, and the conflicts in Russia and Ukraine and also in the Middle East. Many global commodity prices are low, which can be attributed to the current surplus due to individual factors such as good growing conditions for many crops and plentiful oil supplies, as well as decreased demand. Low commodity prices causes lower cost of production for New Zealand firms, increasing production and revenue, somewhat offsetting the negative impact on New Zealand producers of commodities receiving lower prices. Oil prices have risen from $45 US dollars in January to around $60 per barrel. After OPEC's declaration of their intent to produce 30 million barrels per day, the price is predicted to reach $70 by the end of 2016, increasing further if the predicted New Zealand dollar continues to depreciate against the US dollar. Currently, many central banks are easing their interest rates, which will cause increased foreign investment in New Zealand banks since our interest rate is still relatively higher. Fixed mortgage rates are very low, causing mortgage holders to move from floating to fixed mortgages. In summary, we feel that due to the current volatility of market conditions, if we lowered the OCR, the effects could be very large due to unforeseen sudden changes, and New Zealand inflation could rise rapidly, exceeding the target range. Therefore, therefore, we feel the OCR should be unchanged at this time and the economy will slowly move to the mid-range of the PTA of 2% by late 2016. Weighing up the current inflationary and deflationary pressures, the continued expected growth in the New Zealand economy over the next 18 months, increased employment, increased consumption, the closing of the output gap leading to wage increases, and the recovery of the US economy leading to a likely depreciation of the New Zealand dollar, Increased exports and increased costs of imported raw materials are all inflationary influences. Mitigating this somewhat is the low commodity prices, poor economic performance of many of our trading partners, and lowering of their interest rates. However, we feel until some of the volatility in the market is settled, there is no need to change the OCR at this stage, but we will continue to monitor the situation and make changes as necessary.
Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, we saw your recommendation, but the bank actually cut interest rates uh, in June. Can you tell me what you think the implications of that cut will be on the New Zealand economy? So the effect on consumers is that they'll be receiving less returns for their savings, so it dis discourages savings. Mm -hmm. More borrowing because of decreased interest rates. But on um, mortgages and loans, there'll be lower interest rates for those. So people with current loans and mortgage rates that are floating will have more income to spend rather than paying their debt. A decrease in savings could lead to a decrease in investment as well for firms. Yeah, and less investment from overseas sectors as due extent. to the lower interest rates. That'll lower demand for the New Zealand dollar and the exchange rate will go down as well, which we've seen. Any other impacts? Um, and then the depreciation of the New Zealand dollar will um, aid in our exports as a bit more price competitive overseas. Are we ready to summarise? So the effect on consumers is that savings will increase as they will, oh, savings will decrease, sorry, as they will be receiving less returns for their savings. And this could also lead to decreased investment. Borrowing, on the other hand, will increase as they get more as mortgage rates are lower. This could also see a decrease in overseas investment as overseas investors will be receiving relatively less returns on their um, investment in New Zealand. We also see the depreciation of the New Zealand dollar, which will make our exports more competitive in the global market. Okay, excellent. If I can just follow through. So you've, you've gone through the impacts of activity. So consumption might increase, investment might in increase, exports will increase. What's the next link in the chain? Inflation. Inflation. So, so can, you, can you follow through on that? Um, as a lot of what Amy has said will increase demand, um, AD, that'll mean that prices will go up because there's more demand for goods. Yeah, yeah. excellent. Prepared. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> Perfect. Cool, thanks guys. Uh, so as you noted in your presentation, the rate of inflation is currently very low. So it's currently at 0.3%. Is it bad that the rate of inflation is that low? I think it's not necessarily. Yeah, but Especially. due to the PTA, we need our inflation rate to be um, between one and 3% from the rest of the term. It's dangerous term, yeah. if the inflation rate falls below zero. We don't yeah. want deflation. It's, it's not extremely bad, we still want to get it higher. Yeah, given that inflation is incurring, occurring at the moment, not as opposed to disinflation, it's not too much as more worry. To deflation. Especially um, due to the factors causing it to be low. Like we said, they're volatile, so inflation should move up soon. Mm. Like oil prices, major influence. And also with the cut in the OCR, we'll see inflation yeah. returning back to the target range. Yeah, see if we start taking more. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, the L inflation rate at the moment is below the PTA of 1-3% to over the medium term. Um, in itself, it's not too dangerous but if it falls into deflationary t um, territory that would be really bad for the economy. Um, because we believe it's based on the volatile factors such as oil prices, um, hopefully it should go up again once oil prices go up and also due to the recent OCR cut and when inflation increases, um, which will increase inflation. That's a great answer. Um, so when inflation is forecast to be low in the medium term, the Reserve Bank will typically lower the official cash rate for the reasons you said in the first question. What do you think would happen if inflation is very, very low and yet the official cash rate is very close to or at zero? 
So I guess the OCR, the Reserve Bank could look to other tools. Mm -hmm. So maybe macro prudential, macro prudential jawbone. So they'd say that they expect inflation to increase, and then consumers would have high inflationary expectations, which would follow through to actual increases in demand and then inflation. Is there other policies that government could use to maybe increase demand? Or um, if they cut tax rates, but that's not the Reserve Bank, of course. But I guess there's more than just the Reserve Bank controlling the economy. Could influence in the exchange rate help at all? Um, it's a short-term method, though. They haven't got because we're such a big trading currency, they can't have a long-term effect on the exchange rate. But I guess it could help a small amount if in the short-term solution. But yes. Um, So in this situation, although an OCR cut wouldn't be possible for the Reserve Bank to make, they could use other policies within their macro prudential toolkit. This could also include in trying to inf influence consumers and businesses' inflationary expectations. So the Reserve Bank could come out and say, we expect inflation to increase. So then consumers would increase their consumption, leading to a rise in AD and a rise in the price level. So inflation could occur even though no cut in the OCR happened. There's also other policies that government could take, such as a cut in tax rates. Although this isn't the Reserve Bank's job, um, the government also has a role in helping to maintain the New Zealand economy its stability. Also, a short-term method could be trying to influence the exchange rate. That's a, that's a very good answer. But let's make the problem slightly more difficult. Suppose the general public didn't believe that inflation would increase, no matter what we said. And suppose the government was stubborn and didn't cut taxes or increase spending. So those are not options open to us. What else do you think we could do within the power of the central bank? Could they influence the money supply? Mm -hmm. That's the other, yeah. the other mm -hmm. power reserve bank. Yeah. So if they decrease money supply, that would increase the, yeah. if they increase money supply. And no, decrease money supply. We certainly want to increase the money supply. Yeah, you want to increase money supply. Increase, so to increase to prices. How would we go about doing that without um, moving interest rates? They print more money. <sighs> um, do they um, borrow from overseas to bring money into New Zealand? Um, I think that. The Reserve Bank can print more money because if you look at the Germany example, they print heaps of money yeah. and caused hyperinflation. Mm. So if the Reserve Bank prints a moderate amount of money, that can cause inflation to go up a bit. But they have to do it within reason so that it didn't become completely worthless. Yeah. So if none of the other tools were working, um, the Reserve Bank can print more money and MV equals PQ. So an increase in M uh, will increase the price level. Um, it has to be careful there because you can cause paper inflation, as Amy said, um, but we think that's legit. Okay, I'll just push it just a little bit further. <laughs> We've printed the money. We have it. It's in the vaults. You're going to distribute the money. How? How would they distribute the money? Um, mm. I don't know. Is there increased government spending? Mm. Increased government spending. Yeah. Is it government rather than sorry? Yeah. Is it government rather than the Reserve Bank? Like what is worth? Yeah. Well, they have to create, I guess, an injection into the economy. So oh, yeah. 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 yeah, definitely. So more subsidies and more transfer payments. Can I just redirect you? Suppose you've got a bunch of cash and you want to give it to me. Are you going to give it to me for free? You might want something from me. What would you want? I guarantee that you're going to give it back at some stage, I guess. <laughs> so, um, loans? Loans? Mm. 
What might I have that you'd be willing to swap for that cash? I guess resources, so I can try and increase employment mm -hmm. with me. So, to, in order to get this new money that's printed into the economy and the circular flow, you could do this through increased government spending, although this is in the Reserve Bank's role. But it, otherwise, to create another injection into the economy, the Reserve Bank could try and increase employment and then be able to put this money in as a return for these resources that they get from consumers. Also, they could do this through loans. Yeah, okay, that's very good. The latter one was the, that was where I was really looking. The, the, the Reserve Bank probably could buy assets, in, including government bonds. That, and that's how the cash gets into the system. Let me just change topic slightly. So we have seen, and you did mention in your presentation, oil prices have fallen a long way, dairy prices have fallen a long way. Uh, it's been quite dramatic. Um, how do you think these changes will impact on the New Zealand economy? There's a reduction in the incomes for the firms, so they're losing the reduction in losing. consumption spending and investment. Primary yeah, so low business confidence and um, yeah, so definitely increase uh, decrease in investment. And then and what are you also can, can you focus on the different types of commodities I just mentioned? Okay, so we import one, we export the other. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the fall in dairy prices is not good for the New Zealand economy, but the fall in oil prices is good for our businesses because it means the um, production costs, costs production are lower. Yeah. Um, we have to consider how the exchange rate we've got at the moment affects this as well because we've got a low exchange rate. The oil, so the oil prices. prices. And our exports are more price competitive. Yeah. Yeah. So the low exchange rate is good for the dairy prices. Yeah, so it's buffering a little bit. Yeah, it's compensating effects. for the yeah. low prices. But it also means oil prices aren't quite so low. Yeah. Do we think that this will cause deflation as like price? If Production costs of firms are less. They can lower their prices or not. We have pretty low oil um, oil prices at the moment, and that's not happening. Mm. But we've got pretty close. But if it mm. continued, or if and they drop focusing on dairy, then they won't be lowering their prices. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so with low commodity prices, um, with dairy, that means that the farmers dairy producers' income um, has decreased and they'll consume less and this will affect the rest of the economy. It means low business confidence as well as dairy is, seen, is vital to the New Zealand economy. Um, in terms of oil, the cost of production for firms that will go down because it's used in production um, and this will mean that it's they'll produce more. Um, the, our exchange rate also affects this. It means our exports, uh, our dairy exports are slightly, uh, it mitigates that, so prices aren't quite so low for us, um, but it also means oil prices are slightly less low for our businesses as well. This could possibly lead to deflation if they drop further. Excellent, thank you. Cool, so you mentioned in that last answer that the exchange rates dropped quite a bit, so it has dropped quite a lot since April. What do you think has driven the dollar down and how might you expect this to affect the economy? So definitely the low commodity prices. Um, I think the low commodity prices only affect it insofar as they affect the New Zealand economy and rate mm. of inflation. And therefore, because remember we've only got 10 percent of exports yep. oh, yeah. um, that affect the, the New Zealand dollar is only 10 percent of exports, and the rest is investment mm -hmm. and trading. Um, so, there's a so that will affect the commodities, will affect the economy, and that will affect inflation, that will affect the OCR. Mm -hmm. But the OCR is the major factor in the New Zealand exchange rate because it's dropped. There'll be less foreign investments or less yeah, demand for New Zealand dollars. Yeah, because interest rates are relatively lower compared to other countries overseas. 
especially if America does increase their exchange, um, let's say Federal Reserve. Yeah. Because that'll mean um, more competition for investment in the yeah. US. Yeah. It's the seventh biggest trading thing in the world, so it's a big thing. <laughs> um, so the low commodity prices, sorry, the new, um, depreciation of the New Zealand dollar is partly due to the low commodity prices, which, as before, has affected inflation in New Zealand and that has caused the OCR to be increased. So the OCR decreased, decreased, so <laughs> decreased. Um, so that's what has the major effect on the New Zealand dollar. As our interest rates fall in banks, we have less foreign investment and this decreases demand for the New Zealand dollar. Uh, the decreased demand for the New Zealand dollar means that our dollar depreciates. Yes. And as the, um, as the US is set to increase the Federal Reserve rate, um, more investors will invest in the US to New Zealand. And yeah. Yep, that's very good. Okay, you've been through an interesting exercise of, of looking at uh, data and, and forecasts. Reserve Bank actually publishes its forecasts, including its plans for interest rates. And we're one of the few central banks in the world to do this. Why do you think we do it? Why do we actually publish and tell everybody our plans? I think the Reserve Bank is there to give confidence to New mm -hmm. Zealand businesses and consumers. So they want to show that the New Zealand public that they are in control mm -hmm. and that they... So they give this some plans. Yeah, yeah plan for the future. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, it's very key for the business planning. I think that's the main thing. It means businesses can know what's going to happen in the future and they can increase investment or decrease investment. So it keeps price stability as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess it also influences inflationary expectations. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If people know that um, the OCR is going down, they'll think inflation is going to increase. And this will affect their buying and spending habits. Um, it may also affect whether people decide to have a fixed or floated, floating mortgage rate yeah. or savings rate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it will help financial institutions decide where to set their fixed mortgage rate. Okay. Do you mind being on that? Cool. So we think that the Reserve Bank publishes forecasts, including where it might move the OCR, to inspire confidence in the New Zealand economy. It can help businesses to plan and determine if they should invest or cut back on their investment. It also helps to maintain price stability by controlling the inflationary expectations of New Zealanders. So if consumers think that the OCR is going to decrease, they might um, increase their consumption, which would then cause the desired inflation. Uh, it could also help financial institutions to design, to decide about their fixed and floating mortgage rates, and also consumers to decide if they, which type of mortgage they want to choose. That's a very good answer, thank you. Yeah, I think great. we have one more question for you. Yeah, um, so typically when we publish those forecasts, the, um, the interest rate projections move quite gradually. Why do you think the Reserve Bank moves interest rates in small increments rather than, for example, at the moment, dropping interest rates by a lot to get inflation back to the target midpoint? To give stability to the economy, yeah. I guess. Um, because sometimes it's caused by um, factors in the economy that are volatile so it can change and so you don't want to react too harshly to things that are that could potentially like rise quickly in the future and things like that. I well, guess also if they change things rapidly people will be uncertain about the future like yeah they, that's exactly what they don't want to do they want to give people confidence and yeah. well, influence their yeah. inflationary expectations they think if it drops really quickly that inflation is going to go way up. And because it takes a while for the effects to come through yeah. you don't know what the um, you know, it's going to be like nine months. Yeah. And I guess because they can only change it eight times, or well, they have the opportunity to change it eight times a year, then if you cut it too much, then there's like quite a long gap between trying to recover what you've done. Yeah. Are we ready to finish that? Yeah. yeah, I think we're ready. So the Reserve Bank only cuts the OCR in small amounts in order to create stability within the New Zealand economy. There could be volatile factors behind what's causing inflation or perhaps disinflation in the New Zealand economy and these could change quite rapidly. So a large cut in interest rates but could then create um, extreme inflation or the opposite in the New Zealand economy which the Reserve Bank wants to discourage as their goal is price stability. So because 
cutting interest rates so rapidly would create uncertainty and also the effects of an OCR cut take at least nine months to be seen in the New Zealand economy. The Reserve Bank would want to control the rate at which they cut interest rates in order to inspire stability and confidence in the New Zealand economy. Very good. That's a great answer. We're done. You can now relax. <laughs> well done. <laughs>